2,000 years ago, the world saw the original Palm Sunday. On that Palm Sunday, the Lord of heaven and earth entered Jerusalem on a baby donkey. He didn't come to us with power and magnificence, but with meekness and gentleness. On that Palm Sunday, those who sang Hosanna would five days later shout, crucify him. On that Palm Sunday, Jesus turned his face toward Jerusalem, where he would endure the most painful and humiliating kind of death, the kind of death that would save the world. Palm Sunday is a reminder of who Jesus is and who we should be as we follow him. Palm Sunday reminds us that the way of Jesus is the way of the donkey, the way of humility, the way of gentleness. Palm Sunday reminds us that it's totally possible to be with Jesus on Sunday, but forsake him on Friday. And Palm Sunday reminds us that Friday is coming. Well, good morning again and blessings to you on this Palm Sunday. My name is Liz and I'm one of the pastors here on staff at Bethany. And as you probably noticed, I was also a participant in the most recent Rooted class. And I want to note, I was a participant, not a leader. I was, pa or I was Liz in that class, not pastor. And later in the sermon, I will speak more about my Rooted experience. But I, what, what I will tell you now is that Rooted has been very impactful on me and my life of faith. And I would encourage all of you to prayerfully consider joining the next Rooted class. The next class will begin on May 17th and it will be 10 weeks long. You can sign up on our website and find out more information about it there. I would even be okay if you took out your phones now and looked, but just saying, it's okay. Today, there are a lot of things happening. Today is the final day of our current worship series called Deep Clean, where we're doing a deep dive into our hearts and cleaning out those things that we don't want living in there. Sometimes it's those things we don't want anyone to know about, like our pride or our shame or our addiction. Today, we're going to look at our dissatisfaction the ways in which we find ourselves continually searching for the next thing that will somehow make us happier than we currently are. Searching for the thing that fills us with joy or a sense of wholeness, but always those things seem to come up short and we're back searching all over again. Today is also Palm Sunday, right? It's the first day of Holy Week the week in which we remember the last days of Jesus's life, the week in which we see and experience in tangible and real ways the depth of Jesus's love for you and for me, the most holy of weeks where we experience the almighty power of God's love and grace for the whole world. Now, I wonder, have you ever stopped to think about how much time you spend searching for things? Like looking for a parking spot in the parking lot at Hy-Vee or Target or even here at church, trying to find the best spot, you know, the one, that the one that's closest to the door or closest to the section of the store that you want to be in or closest to your section here at church. And you find one, but you then you continue to circle because you're like, there has to be a better one. Right? There has to be a better spot. Or have you thought about how much time you spend searching for the next TV show to binge watch on whatever streaming service that you have? We spend a lot of time searching, always looking, always wanting more. And even when we choose that parking spot or pick that show to watch, there's a small voice that kind of rings in our heads. Are you sure there isn't something better? Are you sure there isn't something more? A voice that tells us to keep on searching. I'm gonna tell you about an experience that I've had recently with a lot of searching involved. So I recently bought Luke, my 10 month old son, a new shirt. 
right? It's exciting. And uh, this shirt was, I was so excited when I bought this shirt because it says small fry on it with a picture of french fries. Now, hang on with me for a minute. Um, when I was younger, my dad used to call me his small fry. So when I found this shirt, I was like, oh, I'm so excited. I'm going to take a picture of him in the shirt and I'm send it to my dad and we'll have this aw moment, right? This is all I wanted. This was what was going to happen. So I bought the shirt, washed it quickly, put Luke in it the first day we got it. And like any 10 month old does, no matter how many bibs you put on him, got food everywhere. So back in the wash, it went. And then it disappeared. I have no idea where this shirt went. I went back to go put it on him like a week or so later. I swear it is gone. I swear the shirt has grown legs and walked out the door because I have torn apart the house and I can't find it. I ended up getting so frustrated because this shirt that I thought was going to be a fun memory with me and my son has ended up being so much stress and annoyance. And so I just wanted a sense of fun, right? And yet I'm still searching. Finally, I actually spent the $5 and bought the shirt again, just so that I can have it. And yes, I was able to get the cute picture and send it to my dad and do all the thing. But every time I see the shirt now, it still has my brain going, where did the first one go? And I end up searching all over again. And I know that someday I will find it in probably the craziest of places, right? We're always looking for something, a better job, a bigger house, a newer car, a smarter smartphone, right? There's so many things that our world tells us we need. And in that searching, we can lose sight of what we have and who is actually with us. Our world tells us that there is always something more, always something to be searching for. And if we just keep looking, then we will be satisfied. It was the same way with the crowd that gathered on that first Palm Sunday. They were searching. They were searching for a Messiah. The crowd was made up of people who were wanting to search for and find Jesus, the man who had done some amazing things. Remember the people who were gathered there. In John chapter 12, it says, Many in the crowd had seen Jesus call Lazarus from the tomb, right, raising him from the dead, and they were telling others about it. That was the reason so many went to meet him because they had heard of this miraculous sign. They wanted to search Jesus out and see if he was as wonderful and powerful as they had heard. They were searching for and waiting for the Messiah. The Messiah that the world told them to look for one with military power, one with physical strength, one with the force to overthrow the Roman government. They were searching for someone that they thought had worldly power and might, someone who would bring them worldly security and strength. And yet who they found was Jesus, a different kind of Messiah, one of meekness and gentleness, one of grace and peace, a Messiah of love and welcoming. What they found was that Jesus was nothing like the Messiah that the world told them to search out. And they continued to search for and look for that Messiah that the world told them they needed to find. There are times that we find ourselves searching in our lives of faith searching for God, crying out to him in the midst of struggle, searching for what next, wondering where is God in the midst of the unknown, searching for where God is leading when sometimes God feels so far away. I entered into the rooted class searching, searching for what next, searching for what 
now, searching for where God was calling me in this new chapter of life. Because the reality is my whole life, including my life of faith, was changed when Luke was born. I didn't know what to do with this new stage of life and of faith. And so I went to Rooted feeling overwhelmed by being a new mom and a pastor and a wife and a daughter and a sister and a friend and just trying to make it through every day, making sure everyone was alive and fed. And yet, knowing that I wanted to deepen my faith and at the same time wondering how was this going to change and what was God going to teach me? And it was through the class, through the rhythms that the class established, rhythms of devotion and prayer, rhythms of repentance and generosity, opportunities for service and sharing stories among fellow Christians, and today, finally celebrating. It was through those rhythms of faith that my eyes were opened in a new way. My connection with God and others grew deeper and the roots that had been established grew even deeper and wider than I could have imagined. I came to realize that I didn't have to search out God in this new chapter of my life. God was already there with me. No matter what the stage I have been or will be, God has been and continues to be present in my life and in the lives of people around me. It wasn't up to me to search him out because he's right here. The thing that I need to do, the thing that we all need to do, is to be open to his presence and to listen to his voice. Not the voice of the world that tells me and tells all of us that we're not doing enough or that we're not enough or that you need to keep searching for that thing that will somehow give you fulfillment. But I needed to be open and listen to God's still small voice that speaks reminding me and all of us that we are his loved children and that in him, we have all that we could have ever need. The voice of God that doesn't condemn us for being weak, but it works in our weakness to point to his strength. The voice of God that enters into the hearts and speaks a word of love and grace and peace. The voice of God that reminds us we don't have to search for him. All we have to do is do what Jesus did on that first Palm Sunday. Turn our eyes to Jerusalem. Turn our eyes to the cross. The promise of Holy Week is that we don't have to search for God. He is not off somewhere separate from us. He does not leave us abandoned or orphaned. The promise of Holy Week is that God has torn the veil that was between him and creation so that nothing not even death can stand in his way from his love for us that is in Christ Jesus. If you feel like you're searching or you feel like you're looking for something to make you feel whole, if you're searching for God, wondering where he is, this Holy Week, my prayer is for you that you would listen to God's voice that is so much more powerful than the voice of the world. God's voice is here to remind you of his love, remind you of his grace, and most importantly, remind you that in him, you are enough. Jesus is the true Messiah, the one who turned his face and pointed toward Jerusalem for our sake. And that is why today we celebrate. And that is why we can say, praise God. Blessing on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to the King of Israel. Let's pray. Good and gracious God. <laughs> there are so many voices that tell us that we need to keep searching, that we're missing something. But God, help to quiet those voices and help us to be in tune to your voice. 
the voice that tells us that we are loved and we're forgiven and that just calls us into relationship with you. God, help us to know and to hear your voice today and always. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen.